guys, how you going? So today on Big House War, we are going to be doing a sort of review. I don't know, is it, is it a review or is it more of a reaction? I don't really know. It's a new Netflix show called The Last Dance, which is about the 97, 98 Chicago Bulls. Around this time, obviously, they'd won five of their past seven years in the NBA. And obviously, they're known as one of the best teams of all time. You know, they had players like Scottie Pippen, obviously Michael Jordan. I don't know why. I can't believe I just said Scottie Pippen before I said Michael Jordan. I can't, <laughs> I can't believe I said Scottie Pippen before I said Michael Jordan. I think that's kind of also because I've watched the second episode before filming this first reaction to the first uh, first episode. Second episode obviously focuses around Scotty Pippen quite heavily, so we'll do that in another video. But yeah, the 97, 98 Bulls have players like Dennis Rodman, Michael Jordan, Scotty. I just did it again. I said somebody else before I said Michael Jordan. <laughs> Basically, the series revolves around getting the Chicago Bulls one last opportunity at a title when they feel like they're on the end. They're on the edge of their dynasty. They're on the edge of kind of their greatness, and, and they're about to fall apart after this year. That's basically the summary of how this series is meant to be and so it's a documentary about you know the ins and outs of the organization level rather than the actual on the court level because it really does emphasize the fact that the organizer and Jerry Krause says obviously quite heavily that the organization wins championships not necessarily the players that's kind of the emphasis that this series is showing that there is a lot more than just the on the court and the fans actually get to see and, and although we kind of understand that basically anyway I think it's just yeah a lot more of an emphasis on the organizational structure and, and everything that goes on behind the scenes rather than what you actually get to see. And it shows how special winning the title actually was that year. Because obviously they went and won their last year in the last dance, which made it six and eight years, and obviously the two years in between, Michael Jordan went to the Chicago White Sox. We're gonna be doing a reaction to every single episode because this is, firstly for me, very interesting. I absolutely love this and it's a huge thing right now. Everyone wants to watch this show. Actually, apparently I did hear this, that Jordan wasn't originally going to allow this to come out. Jordan wasn't originally going to let this documentary that is, you know, unprecedented behind the scenes action throughout locker rooms, throughout, you know, when they went to France, Paris, you know, all, everything, you know, everything that involves this situation and everything that involves this season, they were, the cameras were given access to. And I believe that Jordan wasn't actually going to allow this, but funnily enough, and this is in fact, but funnily enough, I saw something that said that back in 2016, LeBron James won the title with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Michael Jordan came out and said, you know what? It's, uh, it's okay. You guys can, can use it. So if that's fact or not, it's funny nonetheless because obviously it means that LeBron James was was up and coming. LeBron James was uh, starting to make a name for himself on a serious level and starting to, I don't know, not taint Jordan's legacy. Jordan's legacy will always remain, but start to make ground on becoming the greatest player of all time. And I feel like Jordan's like, you know what? I'm gonna make people remember my name. <laughs> it's been 20 odd years since I was in the league. I'm gonna make people remember the name of Michael Jordan. <laughs> backstory on myself as well I was only three or four years old when uh, well three and four years old when this was happening in 97 98 I was born in 1994 and I'm also a relatively new basketball fan I uh, I've only been I'm from Gold Coast Australia which is obviously in America. And I didn't grow up with basketball. I grew up with rugby league. I grew up with football. You know, basketball is relatively new for me. I've probably been watching it for about 10 or so years since I was about 15 years old. And that was well and truly past Jordan's era and well and truly past the Chicago Bulls era. So for me, this is absolutely incredible to watch because obviously I didn't get to watch this live. I know all about the Chicago Bulls of the 90s. I know all about how this team was formed. I know all about the, the Scotty Pippins and your Dennis Rodmans and your, your, your Longleys. But you know, I never got to experience it. So that's why this series is, is really good for, you know, the new generation like myself who you know, only get to see LeBron, only get to see the, what's happening right now and, 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 and don't know all that that went on behind the scenes back then and, and even in the news and just how the feeling was live. So it's a, it's a really good thing for myself. And the thing that I found most interesting about this episode is that they, they, they spoke about the fact that they were starting to rebuild. Now this is in the 97, 98 season. So they've just won five titles in their past seven years. Okay, and, and they're still winning. They're still in that winning momentum. However, the organization wants to move on, really. They want to start rebuilding so that they don't go through a plateau process. I found that it very interesting that despite the fact that they were still winning, despite the fact that they were still on top, and despite the fact that, you know, Jordan, Pippen, Rodman, Longley, Steve Kerr, you know, they were all basically still at their peak. They were starting to think that Jordan was the only one still at his peak and everyone else was was willing to be able to be moved on, basically. They were able to be pushed further and, and, and separate so that they can start to rebuild and, and continue the process around Jordan. And the craziest part about this is that the, obviously, you know, like I just said, they were, they were moving into a new phase and they were wanting to get a fresh team together around Jordan. They had already sacked Phil Jackson before the season had even started. So this head coach, who just won five years out of the past seven, 
and you're gonna get rid of him before the season even starts? Like, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Like, I, I can understand if you want to start moving on players, but I don't really get why you'd want to get rid of your head coach. Like, I don't, I don't get that, especially before the season starts. Now, I knew absolutely nothing about Jerry Krause before this. I knew absolutely no, no idea who this man was until I started watching this. He's an interesting character. <laughs> He's an interesting character. I personally, from what I've seen, I don't believe he intentionally went out to do wrong. I don't think he intentionally went out to kind of create animosity within the Bulls organization. I guess he felt like an outcast and wanted to have a massive say and he wanted the intention to be on him and from that he distanced himself from the players and, and from people around him and, and especially Phil Jackson as well and we'll find out Scottie Pippen a bit later on too. And I also found it incredible how much the Chicago Bulls transformation was from the 80s. You know as a really young person as a 25 year old who, who didn't grow up in this time obviously my whole life I have known about the Chicago Bulls and I've known about Chicago. Obviously I went to Chicago last year some vlogs of it at the United Center. Incredible experience. Zach Levine hit a, not a buzzer beater, but with a couple of seconds to go, he went a, a game winning layup against the Philadelphia 76ers. And that was an incredible experience. And I loved being in the United Center and seeing the Jordan statue. And, and obviously now that statue is inside the foyer. They created a whole foyer around it, but it used to be outside, which is just really cool. It, it, it was a really, really cool experience. And obviously I went and saw Blackhawks games and, and, and Cubbies games, I'm a massive Cubbies fan, and, and White Sox games. And look, it's, it, it's very interesting to, to see that before the night, no one gave a shit about the Bulls. Okay, so the Bulls are a, a synonymous name worldwide. They are one of the biggest organizations worldwide. Everyone knows the Chicago Bulls, and obviously that's because of Michael Jordan, and one of the greatest players of all time. Something that I really picked up on was that an English football match that came to Chicago got a higher viewing, it got more people going to their game than the Bulls did. And that's, that's nuts to me. And that is absolutely nuts that an English football match went to Chicago and they got more views, they got more people there, they got more people watching on. It's just like in America, no one really cares about football. When I say football, I'm saying soccer, by the way, guys. No one really cares about football. And they got more than the basketball, the 80s. Just find that absolutely nuts. Obviously, you know, you got your North Side is supporting the, the Cubbies, you got your South Side is supporting the, the White Sox, you got pretty much everyone just kind of getting behind the Blackhawks. Everyone loved the Bears. Obviously, the Bears of the 80s were just absolutely nuts. Except for the Bulls, I guess it's because they were such an average organization beforehand. I, I'm not too sure, but I, I just find it absolutely insane that until Michael Jordan came along, the Chicago Bulls were a nobody team. Moving to the next part was all about Michael Jordan. And you can't speak about the Chicago Bulls without speaking about Michael Jordan. It's just really as simple as that. He is the Bulls, really. And although that might affect other players, I guess they kind of knew it and they just didn't really care because they were winning and they were they were part of the greatest franchise, one of the greatest franchises of all time. I'm talking players like Pippen and Rodman and, and Longley and, and, and Kerr. I guess they just kind of accepted the process and accepted who they were and, and what their team was. It must be difficult though. It must be difficult knowing that you were a part of one of the greatest franchises of all time and, and you were a heavy feature in that. And especially, talking about Pippen, we'll get to that later, and knowing that your name isn't really given the credit that it probably deserves. Obviously I knew that Hakeem a larger one went uh, first in the draft when Jordan got drafted to the Bulls and that was for Houston Rockets for Hakeem and you know you, you, you can't complain about that when you obviously look back at drafts and you see Jordan or, or someone get drafted above someone who's doing fantastic now firstly it's great in hindsight I don't think the Rockets would have been too, <laughs> too disgraced or unhappy with uh, Hakeem Olajuwon who is one of the greatest players of all time as well obviously he doesn't have the name of Michael Jordan but I guess that's because I guess Michael Jordan as well is he, uh, people love scorers people love those game clutch winning players and Hakeem wasn't really like that he was absolutely a monster in every aspect of the court however he wasn't the game winning clutch last seconds buddy uh, motivating drive to, to to win the game and that's why I feel like people would 100% heavily favor a player like Michael Jordan over the defensive minded players like H Hakeem Olajuwon. Second pick was Sam Bowie I'm not gonna lie to you guys like I said I'm fre pretty fresh here I don't really even know who that is so I'm gonna have to say that was a re regrettable decision by who went second in that draft especially when Michael Jordan is obviously next and I can guarantee there would have been some Hall of Famers below Jordan that that probably they would have wanted to pick as well well, but like I said, it's all great in hindsight, and, and uh, Anthony Bennett is, uh, <laughs> is is one to talk about that in regards to you know the first pick. And then Jordan went with a third pick too. Like I said before, a team, a city that was crying out for a winner, a, a team that needed someone who could finish games off, that could really rally the city of Chicago. Because like I said, no one gave a shit about the Bulls or basketball in Chicago because of how many sports there are in the city, and, and the Cubbies and the White Sox and the Blackhawks and, and the Bears. Obviously, the Bears, the big time, the Bears. People didn't have a reason to really get behind the Bulls and Jordan was the perfect pick 
before then. Another thing I want to touch on as well is that the team was very well known for its partying and obviously basketball or just uh, I guess a lot of sports would be known for their partying behind the scenes and a lot of the players would be loving that that party atmosphere and as, especially back then in the 80s I think that would be a heavy focus and I guess that's what was alluded to that there was two sets of players you know there was ones that were absolutely massive partiers and then there was ones who, who would focus on on the game itself and obviously Jordan walked in and as we saw he, he, he walked into a room of basically all his teammates doing all those kind of drugs I guess the reason why he is so fantastic and he's, he's miles and miles above the rest is that you know as a rookie coming into a situation like that with all your teammates and all your seniors you kind of want to be impressive you want to show off to your teammates you want to you want to be amongst them you want to be involved with them and, and walking into a room where they're all doing drugs I guess a rookie immediately would think you know what there he's telling me okay come and come and have a bit of a sniff to say no to that and walk out to also focus around the no drinking no drugs no real partying that's something that not many people could do and that's what separates worst from the best that's what separates the average from the best and that's what separates the good from the best and that's why he's the best because as a rookie he was still able to say no to his seniors and whether that's actually true or not but I feel like that is I, I, I personally feel it's true I've seen a lot of memes saying that oh yeah he's walked into a room and his, his teammates are doing all this there's a hundred percent he's gonna do it I don't I disagree I, there's a reason why he's one of the best players of all time is that because he can say no when he feels like the situation isn't favorable to his legacy and, and, and growing his own personal game all in all I just find it really surprising that they knew that this was their last year but then again would it have been their last year if they didn't think like that you know if they had a thought you know we can keep continuing because I don't believe that if they had have separated that they I still believe they could have maybe gone on the next well then again I don't know what happens the next year you know this isn't about the next year I, I guess we'll find out later I guess I'll find out later you guys obviously know you've been Bulls fans or, Chicago or bloody American sports fans for your whole life but for me I don't really know what goes on throughout this season so all I know is that they do obviously end up winning as that's public knowledge there's a document and that's why I guess this show was called The Last Dance but there was a document that said The Last Dance and, and the fact that everyone knew that you know have a good time now and soak it all up now because next year it's not gonna be like this and they were right but I did they kind of will that I guess, and we'll find out later, but I, I, what I'm wondering is, that did they will this? They think that this was gonna happen, and that's why it did happen as the last dance. Like I said, I'm gonna be reacting to every single episode, and I guess for people who, who do know all this, it's gonna be quite interesting to see someone who doesn't know all this Get, get put up to date with it, I guess. <laughs> and I tell you what, they ended on that Chicago song. I don't know if it's a Chicago song. I know I heard it when I was at the United Center every single game. The -na 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 it's a really cool song. I don't know, there's just like a feeling about it. That was a terrible, terrible like way to try and do the song, but. <laughs> there's just something about it. It's just something that, that really gets you going. There's just something that gets you, 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 <laughs> you're getting behind the, the balls. And although they weren't great last year and they haven't been great for a decent amount amount of time. I just don't, I, I'm personally just not a believer of, of making everyone aware that this is the last year and that you guys won't be together next year. Uh, that's just me personally. But I'd love to see your guys' thoughts. Obviously, I hope you have watched episode one. If you haven't, definitely go onto Netflix and watch The Last Dance. I don't know how many episodes there are in this series, but it's every single week. There is two episodes out already, though. There is the next one, which I will react to in the next couple of days. It looks like it's going to be an absolutely fantastic series. And if you guys do like me reacting to these sporting kind of series, I can do movies as well. I can do yeah other sporting series that I haven't watched yet. However, if you guys do enjoy this kind of series where we do react to I don't even care if it's an older series. If I haven't seen it yet, then I'll go and have, I'll go and watch it. I'll just kind of avoid the comments because I know you sneaky little devils like to ruin stuff. Anyway, guys, that will do us for today's video. If you did like it, please give me a thumbs up so know that you're enjoying this content. Like I said, I've never really done anything like this before. I really want to get into it. I really want to do stuff like this where I do review new movies and I wanted to review that new Ben Affleck sporting movie, but I just didn't get... Well, all this happened in the movie. The cinema's shut down, so I couldn't actually get there to watch it. I can watch it online and apparently it's a really good movie, so I might actually do that in the coming weeks or ne next week sometime. If you're not a part of the UK Army yet and you do love your sport, go down there, hit the subscribe button. Obviously, it's a very difficult time right now, but this is a perfect time of the series to come out. Like I said, hit that subscribe button, go and hit the little ding -ling -ling notification bell so you get a notification every single time we upload. Don't forget, in the Sheds podcast, every Wednesday, 4 p.m., we have the players on, and I do really appreciate your support for all the content as per always. So that's going to do it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. See ya.